I am your host, Dylan. I am joined by my good friend, Karan, today. Karan, how you doing, man? Doing pretty good, man. Excited for college football to be back. Me too. Speaking of college football, as we speak, as of recording right now on July 19th, we are 39 days away from the very first game in week zero. I'm super excited. When I, I made the days until college football graphic that I do every night, I got to be able to switch it from the four in the front to the three, and it just feels like we're that much closer to college football. Um, plenty of Mountain West teams are going to be showing up in week zero, and that's what we're going to be talking about first. So without further ado, let's kind of jump into it a little bit. Um, some pretty big st- storylines with the Mountain West here this offseason from last season. Three new head coaches, one returning to the game. Um, you know, the returner is Jeff Tedford. That's a, a really fun one after he resigned back in 2019 after the end of that season. Kalen DeBoer took over. Kalen DeBoer is now in Seattle at UW, and now he comes back to Fresno State. Um, and then the newest head coaches, Jay Norvell, dips from Nevada, going to Colorado State. Ken Wilson leaves from the Oregon linebacker coach's job to take over at Nevada. And Timmy Chang is now the new head coach at, at Hawaii. So of the new head coaches in the Mountain West this season, including Jeff Tedford, who's returning, which head coach do you think will have the most success with their new team? Yeah, I mean, I'm a huge um, Jeff Tedford fan. I think that's really going to well, especially since he's returning to state. But I also think Jay Moore is going to come in and really have one of the best offenses right away. I mean, he's bringing Clay Millen with him, who he had at Nevada. And I think generally he's had one of the best passes. He's had really good passing attacks ever he's won. So I think I could definitely see that working out just as well as Jeff Tedford. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Jeff Tedford returning certainly helps. Um, a lot of that team is, um, or some of that team, I should say, is still there from, you know, when he left in 2019. Having Jake Hayner certainly helps. Um, got a lot of those playmakers coming back as well. Defense looks solid. So I definitely think that's the easy answer. But in terms of the the new teams, um, yeah, you mentioned it. Jay Norvell with Colorado State. When he left Nevada for Colorado State, it felt kind of weird at the time. But compared to Nevada and Hawaii, where their talent stands comparatively, I just think Colorado State, um, it's pretty easy for me to say that they're going to have the better year. Nevada and yeah. Hawaii, I think it's going to be a tough, tough year with the, the yeah, amount of that's, players they lost. That's that's a long-term thing. I don't think it's really going to click in the next year, maybe two years. Absolutely. And then the other really big story, uh, Mountain West was one of the first conferences to announce that they're going to be eliminating divisions, not – um, not in 2022, but in 2023, they're going to have a 2-6 model where each team will play two guaranteed opponents annually and then face six other conference teams as well. And the top two teams will face um, off against each other, the two teams with the highest conference winning percentage um, in the Mountain West Conference Championship game. So I'm curious your thoughts on um, the Mountain West kind of aggression to go after that that rule change once it was announced. Yeah, I mean, generally, I think that going away from divisions, it definitely has its benefits as well as its downsides, but I could definitely see it working well for the Mountain West. I mean, I, did, I, thought the, I thought the divisions were generally pretty balanced, though, in the last few years, like Fresno State and San Diego State, Nevada and one, and then Utah State, Boise State, Air Force. Those are both three strong teams split across, but... I don't think it'll make too much of a difference putting them together. I mean, I think the two best this year, which we'll end up talking about, are Boise State and Fresno State, who are both in different divisions. So I don't know. Maybe maybe there'll be a surprise, but I, I think it'll be more or less the same. I don't think there's anybody out there on, on college football Twitter that's screaming for, for parity in the Mountain West uh, in 2022. Yeah. Um, I definitely agree with that. I don't think this was necessarily the conference we were worried about when it came to eliminating divisions, Um, but it is exciting. It adds just another wrinkle to what I think is one of the most underrated conferences in college football. Um, You know, Utah state and air force are two of my favorite teams really in the group of five Um, and Fresno state is like, I, I think there is balance, but Fresno state to me is far and away the best team in the West. 
even with the team that San Diego State put together last year. Um, I think Fresno State's the better team. I think the Mountain Division is going to be what's going to be exciting in the future with with this new model. Um, you know, yeah. like a Utah State Air Force, you know, conference championship game or Air Force Boise State. Um, I, I think there's a lot of excitement there for sure. Yeah, for sure. So talking about the in-conference matchups and, and ones we'll get to see this season, what are three of your favorite in-conference matchups for the 2022 season and the Mountain West? Um, so first, I think September 30th, San Diego State versus Boise State. Both teams are pretty strong and they're usually consistently good. San Diego State has um, Braxton Burmeister now coming in from Virginia Tech, whereas Boise State's getting Hank Bachmeyer back. So two quarterbacks who have experience, Burmeister more than Bachmeyer, but both of them are pretty experienced. San Diego State's won their last two against Boise State. So it's not like Boise State is far and ahead of them as they are with some other teams in the division or in the conference, but I think that's going to be a good game. And then October 8th, Fresno State plays Boise State. Those are That might be a conference championship preview. It very likely is. Fresno State, best team, best team in their division, and Boise State could be the best team in theirs. So that, that'll be a strong matchup. Jay Kanner, Jeff Tedford, Jalen Cropper. It's bound to be an offensive matchup. And then October 15th, a bit of a sleeper. I think Colorado State versus Utah State. I think they're going to run the scoreboard up. I mean, Jay Marvell, he's got his offense. And Utah State last year with Logan Bonner, they put up numbers. So I think both of those teams could really hang, like, both could hang 50 points any night if they really wanted to. Yeah, and probably not a lot of defense playing in, in that last game for sure, which yeah. is, you know, if you're a Mountain West fan, you're not really used to seeing high-powered defenses anyway. There could be a couple this year, but nothing that's – you know, you're not going to see Big Ten football in the Mountain West um, <laughs> this season. Um, I thought I thought those were really good ones. I wrote down Air Force versus Utah State. I did mention those were a couple of my, my favorite teams. Um, they play in week six. I just think that the complete just contrast in those two teams is going to be really fun because you know what you're going to get with Air Force. Like you just know that they're going to run it, you know, 800 times down your throat. Hezek Daniels is going to be good for a couple of special plays every game. And then Utah State, I'm really curious to see how they bounce back after, you know, winning the conference, winning the L.A. Bowl. They lose Devin Tompkins, their top receiver, but they still have a lot of returning production. I think that could be an absolute show. Um, week eight, I had Boise State versus Air Force. Like I said, I really like Air Force. Um, I think that could be a game where Air Force puts a statement in the Mountain West saying, hey, the, you know, this is the the king of the of the Mountain West of Boise State of the last decade, decade and a half. And, um, you know, I think that could be a statement where Air Force is like, hey, we're the new king now or we're here to take the crown, something like that. Obviously, Utah State won it last year, but Air Force, they've been consistent. I think it's their time to potentially win the Mountain West and win games like this on a national stage. Um, and then Utah State and Boise State, I think that's a game that could be, um, you know, to, that could decide the mountain division, honestly, who, who goes to the championship game. Um, you know, in my standings, I only have one game separating the two and, um, you know, maybe it'll come down to it, but that should be a really high flying offensive game as well, as we're so used to seeing. And I'm, I'm yeah, really excited about, Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, I agree with you on air force. I thought they ended last season really strong and I, I could definitely see them making a run over Boise state. Yeah, that's going to be an exciting one. Um, and another exciting segment is our breakout players. We've talked about some of the teams that we're looking to watch, some of the matchups. How about some of the players? Who are the guys that you're going to write down on your on your bulletin board and say, these are the guys I believe in on July 19th? Yeah, so I've got three of them. First, I think Clay Mellon, quarterback for Colorado State. He's a 2021 four-star transferred in from Nevada. So he's there's not going to be much of a scheme like – not much of a learning curve for him. He's coming with Jay Norvell. And he looked lights out in the spring game. I mean, he threw four touchdowns, 300 yards. Melquan Stovall and him clearly have a good connection. So I could definitely see him putting up numbers similarly to how Logan Bonner did last year. I think Millen could be definitely really good. Then at wide receiver for Boise State, I think Stephen Cobbs is going to have a great season. He's taken over for Khalil Shakir at wide receiver one. And definitely, like, he flashed a couple times last year 
to put up like put up the numbers. So I think he's definitely gonna have a strong season as a wide receiver as well as a kick returner. He's one of the best kick returners in the country. And then at Nevada, I think Jamal Bell taking over for Romeo Dubs at receiver is gonna have a really strong season. Similar to Cobbs, he's also a kick returner, and I think he'll be one of the better deep threats in the country next year. Cobbs is an awesome answer. I was really one of the biggest question marks I had with with Boise State. Um, I think more so than even like Utah State with Devin Tompkins was how do they replace a guy like Khalil Shakir? Um, just because of how electric he was and how much how big of a part that offense was with Khalil Shakir. And I think that um, Stefan Cobbs is a guy who's is brilliant and he's maybe not as electric, um, but, you know, in the kick return game, I think that's where he could be a difference maker for sure. Um, if you guys have watched this, this podcast or listened to our content since probably last August, last September, you should know that I'm a huge Jake Hayner fan. Um, like I remember saying after the UCLA game, like crown Jake Heisman, I was all over that train. Um, you know, the last couple of years, I've really had high hopes for Jake Hayner and he's, he's come through, I think last year he he showed what he can do for a full season, but I definitely think there were times where he could have been better. I think this is going to be the year that he puts it all together. Um, I think you could say last year maybe he broke out. I think a lot of people figured out who he was in the UCLA game, but I think this is going to be the year that he's, you know, contending for, you know, conference player of the year, conference MVP, um, dare I say Heisman. I mean, he was there for like half the season last year. Um, definitely could be he's the top returning passer in the Mountain West so I'm very high hopes for him um, especially with Jeff Tedford taking over as his head coach again um, I keep mentioning Air Force we're going to talk about him a lot in this show Hazik Daniels is a guy I think is going to have a Keenan Reynolds type of year um, you know I, I think he, he proved that he's the Air Force prototype quarterback but he can do more than just you know run the ball and um, you know, and be electric in that regard. He can also throw. He's pretty effective. Um, I, I think he's a, the ultimate package for this kind of an offense, and I'm expecting a huge year from him. And the last one is kind of a super sleeper. A lot of people are putting this guy on, like, their third or fourth team all-conference team. I've got Tavian Combs from New Mexico. He's a safety. He's a, a junior, finished second on the team last year with 81 tackles. Two interceptions, four pass breakups. Um, New Mexico gave him their most improved player award. Um, I think he's a guy that is super consistent, and he showed out against some of the best teams. Um, you know, some of the better teams they played, he put up double-digit tackles. So I'm expecting a big year from, from him. I also – I wouldn't sleep on New Mexico um, this year. I think they're a team that most people are going to say they're at the bottom of the conference. But I feel like they could, they could maybe shake some things up come this fall. Yeah, I agree with you on Daniels. I thought he looked pretty good coming down the stretch last year. Comparing him to Keenan Reynolds, I like that. But at the same time, I think Daniels is a better passer. He definitely showed some strides last year. So I, I'm not going to go out on a limb and say Air Force is going to be this like passing attack, like great passing offense next year. But I think he can definitely get the job done if he needs to. Comparatively, yeah. Comparatively, not going to be as much of a passing attack. But for, for a service team yeah absolutely i think there's going to be um you know some some of those fans of the service teams that are like hey they're they're passing a little bit too much for my liking yeah. what is this but <laughs> zeke daniels can do that and um yeah i think there could be some games where maybe you can even see him go for 300 yards passing 100 yards rushing i that could be a hot take of mine um i i wouldn't put money on that but you know it's a fun <laughs> one to think about um so now my favorite part of these is to go through the projected standings um, you know, this is the, the make it or break it. Let's see what we really know, what we're, what we're putting money on, I guess. Um, and so let me start with you. What are you thinking the Mountain West is going to look like in 2022? Oh, yeah. So I ranked, I, I didn't separate them by division, unfortunately, but I have all the records pulled up. So my bottom three teams went with Hawaii coming last. I don't think that's a hot take to say. Timmy Chang has never really coached at like, he has some coordinator experience, but he's never really coached at all. So really having him as an FBS head coach, I think he's a good culture guy, especially for Hawaii. And they're definitely trying to rebuild that whole program, but it's not going to happen this year. So I have them anywhere from one to four wins. 
Second, second loss, I think UNLV, they took some steps in the right direction at the end of last year, but I don't really think it's there for them. So same range, I think two to five wins. And then third last, I think you said you were a bit higher on them, but New Mexico, I don't really see it with them. I think they're a decent team, but realistically, they're probably going to end up around the four to five win area for me. Then kind of going up a tier from the last three, I think Wyoming. I think Wyoming's around a 500 team. They lost their quarterback to Utah State. But I think they're generally a pretty decent team. They also lost their starting running back to Arizona State. So there's going to be a lot of turnover there. And then Utah State, I think they have a really good offense. And I think they're definitely going to put up, win a couple of games that over like some of the top teams in that division. But at the same time, they have a pretty tough schedule. And so I think they're probably going to end up around that 6-7 win tier as well. Wow. Might be a hot take. That is a hot Nevada, take. I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Nevada, I also see kind of in the same area. They're going to they're gonna have some games where they're winning over the top tier opponents. But at the same time, I don't see them consistently winning this season. So around that six win tier. Colorado State is where I think like you're getting into the top tier teams of the, of the conference. They're going to have maybe the best offense and passing offense in the conference. And I do think, as I said earlier, Clay Mellon's going to do his thing. But overall, I still think there's a lot of work to do on that defense. And so I think they're also going to finish probably seven wins is where I have them. And then really getting to those like top teams, I think San Diego State's going to end up with around seven to eight wins. I think they're a good team. They did really well last year, but they're still kind of in that middle ground offensively. I don't think um, Rex and Burmeister is necessarily moving the needle. I think he's off, but I don't think he's really all that. Air Force, I think, is, a, is an eight to nine win team. I think they're good. I don't know if they're passing offense, obviously, is not – it's a service team. We know it's not going to be all the way there, but I think they're definitely going to be a competitive team, great defense. And Hazik Daniels is a great runner as well. And then the top three teams, I think it's really interchangeable. I think Fresno State, Belize State are going to be the top two teams, somewhere from nine to 10, maybe 11 wins. Then San Jose State, I think, is going to be, they're going to be back in the conversation. I think they've got a really good defense. Valami Fehoko might be the best player overall in the Mountain West. I don't know if that's a hot take. I think that's pretty, pretty reasonable. So I think all three of those teams are in that nine to 10 win range. Fresno State might have a bit of a harder time. They, I know they play USC and I believe BYU out of conference. So um, those are hard to predict as wins, but I think the pretty comfortably win games in conference. Yeah, I think Fresno State uh, does play USC. They do avoid BYU this year. Um, oh, but the okay, USC okay. one is going to be is going to be a big test. Yeah. Yeah, I know BYU floats around a couple of team schedules in the Mountain West this year. Utah State has them, and then a couple others. Fresno has Oregon State. That's who I'm thinking of. That's right. Yeah, yeah BYU's got Wyoming, Utah State, and Boise State in the Mountain West this yeah. year. Yeah, the San Jose State one is, is such an interesting one. Yeah. Um, because I think that their defense is going to be really, really good. Um, I, I do have a take about San Jose State later in, in the show. Um, but I don't know if their schedule is there, to be honest. Um, that's that's one of those that's like, I could see it, but maybe not this year sort of thing. Um, but that that is a really interesting one. Because I think after they you know, had the really good year in 2020, I think most people slept on them in 21. Kind of like most people were doing this year with Utah State. Yeah. Um, and I feel like people were sleeping on San Jose State a little more than they should this year. Um, but I, I definitely think that the offense is going to be a work in progress. But the defense, yeah, defense is going to definitely win them some games. Yeah. So for mine, um, mine actually look fairly different than yours, I think. Um, I've, I've got mine set up in the division. So I'll start with the mountain. Um in last place in the mountain, and I don't know if this is a hot take. I don't feel like it should be, but I've got Wyoming in last place in the mountain Ooh. at four and eight. They lost, I think, way too much production for me to think that they'll be a competitive team this year. Um, 
the offense is going to look completely different. I do like Craig Bowl. I mean, he's in his ninth year. He's he's handled a lot in that program. Um, I just don't think this is their year. Um, I, I don't think that the offense is going to be good at all. Um, defense will probably be average, but I just I just think it's going to be too much. The the loss of Zavian Valade is monumental. Like that guy was just a yeah. huge chunk of their offense. Um, and they had so many guys that transferred at the end of last year. It just gave me a bad feeling going into this year. Um, so I think this is going to be kind of the, the downfall of the Wyoming Cowboys a little bit. Um, fifth place. I, I wouldn't, I wasn't that super high in New Mexico, but higher than most, I'd say. Um, I had them in fifth place in the mountain. I had them also at four and eight, but I give them the advantage because I had them beating Wyoming at home. Um, fourth place. I'm not as high in Colorado state. I'd say they're like a five, maybe six win team. Um, you know, I could see them in bowl contention late in the year. Maybe they, they kind of fall short. Of course, it is a first year head coach, a lot of new pieces. Um, I think they'll get closer than most people think, but I'm not ready. I don't know if I'm ready to say a six, seven win team. I don't think I'm as sold on, on Clay Millen, although the talent is certainly there without a doubt. Cause last year, I don't think Santeo was, um, very good to be honest. Um, I mean, Trey McBride made him look really good, um, but you don't have Trey McBride anymore. That's um, that's going to be tough. But I think there's still some some playmakers that Colorado State's got that can put up points. I definitely think that they'll be one of the top offenses. Um, but I don't know how much better they would be than they were last year. That's that's where I'm at with Colorado State. Um, third place, I've got Boise State. I, I think last year they were they were seven and five they didn't get a chance to play in the bowl game but this year i think their defense is going to be the heart and soul of that team jl skinner in my mind is the best safety probably one of two best safeties in the country um i i think with him and fahoko i think those are the top two players in the mountain west i think skinner is the only guy i would argue over fahoko um but boise state's offense if george halani is healthy um, and, and it's consistent. I think that could be one of the better offenses too. Hank Bachmeyer has got to get better and stay consistent as well. The offensive line is healthy. Um, a lot of experience. We talked about Cobbs um, is going to be a playmaker for that offense trying to replace Khalil Shakir. So I think this is going to be a good, not great year for Boise state. The schedule is pretty tough, um, especially the out of conference schedule for Boise state. Um, trying to remember exactly who they play here. Cause we talked about BYU um, at yeah. Oregon State, which can't really sleep on Oregon State this year, I don't think. Yeah, I, I don't um, have them beating Oregon State. Yeah, I don't either, actually. Um, and at UTEP is a, another one that is probably going to be a toss-up. Who knows what UTEP is going to look like this year, but um, can't sleep on the minors anymore. Yeah, I mean, they did. They lost their top receiver who gave – I believe it was Boise State gave them a pretty good run for their money last year, so – see what that that's right and they do get san diego state they do get fresno state they get at air force um yeah. home against utah state so they get all the higher um the upper tier teams in the mountain west it could be one of those years like last year where the the best of the best just kind of run them over um but it could be a, a chance for them to prove like hey we're still in the mountain west we're still one of the top teams in the group of five i just think they're going to lose a couple of those games and and maybe have an upset um yeah, I could see them losing to, you know, maybe Nevada on the road or losing, um, yeah. you know, Colorado State at home. Like, I just feel like they're not completely there yet, and they could slip up when they shouldn't. Um, where did my list go? There we go. Top two teams. Um, I've got Air Force at number two at nine and three, and then Utah State at nine and three as well. But I got Utah State going seven and one in the conference, Air Force six and two. Um Utah State is like I feel like it's a hot take to say that they have a really good chance at contending for the crown again, let alone winning it. I don't know if I'm ready to say that they're going to win the Mountain West again. I could say maybe they they give Fresno State a run for the money in the championship game, but Utah State does lose quite a bit. Um, and I, I think the run game is going to be a really big part of it because they threw the ball a hell of a amount last year, yeah. but Utah state is such an interesting one because the defense is going to get scored on a lot. Like they're in the bottom, I think 20 and returning production across like every category on defense. 
Um, and it's just, it's going to be brutal for Utah State's defense. So if they can put up 40, 50 points a game, I think they should be an eight, nine win team. Um, if the offense kind of struggles out of the gate, then I could honestly see them being like a, a six, seven win team like you do. Um, yeah, losing Devin Tompkins definitely hurts there. So it definitely lowers their chances of kind of bailing out their defense, but we'll have to see if anyone steps up in that receiver room. And in the West, this is this is such a weird one for me because Nevada has the schedule to be a bowl team, but I don't think they have the personnel or the coaching. So I have them going three and nine, and I have them going zero and eight in Mountain West. I just don't think that they're there yet. I think they're probably like two, three, maybe even four years away. I really like Ken Wilson. He came from Oregon. He brought a lot of um, our walk-ons to Nevada with them, but I, I don't think they're, I don't think they're ready to compete just yet. Um, I've got UNLV finishing right above Nevada at three and nine, but two and six in the conference. I think they're starting to build something there with Marcus Arroyo had a couple tough years in the last couple of years, but there was a lot of promise. I really like Cameron Friel um, returning Pac-12 or not Pac-12. Goodness. What conference are we talking about? The Mountain West <laughs> freshman of the year. Um, he had some moments last year where I was like, okay, there's something here. You know, they kind of switched quarterbacks early in the year, and then I think they figured out who they want to run with. But the defense has not been good, and I would even say decent, in like 15 years. Um, so that's going to be the biggest thing with UNLV. But I think they're one of those teams that could, again, win some games that they're not supposed to and shake things up. I've got Hawaii at 4-9. and nine. Um, I don't think they're quite there yet, but I think the – Future's brighter. I mean, having Todd Graham as your head coach, the future looks dark as it is. But I think now with with you know with Chang in his first year, starting to build in some talent. I think the there's some hope, but it's going to be a little bit as well. San Jose State is one I really want to believe is going to be back to contending for the the conference title. I don't think the schedule is there for them yet. I got them at six and six. But I, I think there's a little bit more of a range with San Jose State than other teams in the conference. Like I could see them being like five and seven to like even nine and three. Um, they're just one of those teams that I've got to see what they look like before I can really estimate what it's you know what it's going to be and what they can do. The defense we know what they can do. The defense is going to be dominant, I think, with Mountain West standards anyway. But the offense is going to be a huge question mark. Um, and I don't know if they can outscore some of those, those high-powered offenses. Second, I got San Diego State. I think they're going to take a bit of a step down. I mean, they won 12 games last year. Um, they lose the point guard. They lose Cameron Thomas. Um, you know, they're, they've got Braxton Burmeister coming in, who we've already talked about is probably not the future. Well, we can't say the future because he's a veteran, but he's not the, he's not the go-to guy. You know, he's not the surefire. Hey, this guy's going to get 3000 yards. This guy's going to lead the passing offense. Um, he's very serviceable. Maybe you could call him a game manager. I think he's below than below average more than anything else. The run game is yeah. going to have to carry the defense is going to have to carry. And I think it will, um, but I've got him at eight and four and then Fresno state. I have them at 11 and one going eight and zero in the conference. I love this Fresno state team. I loved them last year. They gave Oregon a run for their money and people slighted Oregon. We're like, Hey, why didn't they blow out Fresno state? Fresno state was really damn good last year. And they're going to yeah. be really damn good this year. So, you know, if they go in there and I think it's week three, week four against USC and the Coliseum and they give USC a run for their money. Don't be surprised. I'm not saying Fresno State's going to win that game. That is the one game I have them losing. But don't be surprised if it's a close game in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I wouldn't call it me surprised. Yeah. I think people really, like, with the Oregon game, the jokes were definitely out there. But then once Jake Hayner and Fresno State went to UCLA and really, like, that was, that was a hell of a performance for Hayner. I mean, he's injured at the end, still put up a touchdown to win the game. Like, I think people really started to say, like, okay, maybe – Maybe they weren't like that big of a meme anyway. It's so, like this is a real team. That Fresno State game against UCLA was probably top three favorite moments for me yeah. in college football. Like the way Jake Hayner just put the team on his back, like Greg Jennings yeah. was just like was one yeah, of my I tweeted favorite the exact I tweeted the exact same thing that night. 
Yeah, that was that was the Jake Heisman moment for me. Um, yeah. And then obviously he struggled against Hawaii, struggled against New Mexico. Um, you know, I, I don't see him having those kind of games. I don't see the team having those kind of games this year. I think it's their it's their time to time to shine for Fresno State. Jeff Tedford's back in town. I mean, like writing's on the wall. I think it's their time now. So going to team projections, we've talked about each team just a little bit, but I want to go team by team and just kind of give a quick spiel about how we feel about each team going into the season. So Boise State, you know, we talked about last, you know, what they did last year, seven and five with Andy Avalos as a first year head coach. They were supposed to play in the Arizona Bowl against Central Michigan. It was canceled. So from start to finish, it just felt like a really disappointing year for Boise State. Um, you know, they couldn't pull it off in some of the close games. They were three and three in some of those close games. Um, they have the toughest schedule in the Mountain West this year. And it's just, I, I, I think it's a make it or break it year for, for this program to see, like, can they return to what they were a couple of years ago? Or are they just going to be a middling, you know, middle of the pack Mountain West team? Um, so what's your inkling with, with Boise State this year? Do you think they're going to take that step up? Well, I think you mentioned George Filani. That's really like he's been not exactly like the definition of reliable the last few years. He he was injured for majority of last year. A year before, he wasn't really there. But when he in his first year, he looked really good. And I think when he's on the field, you're definitely looking at one of the best playmakers in the conference. And that's definitely going to help them win games. But also Hank Bachmeyer, like his freshman year, he definitely flashed. And I was, de- I definitely thought like, okay, this is going to be a guy who's around for a bit. He's going to, he's going to really like show out in the mountain West, but it really hasn't been there since that he got injured. I think both of the last two years and really hasn't like when he's been on the field, there's been a lot of moments where it's like, what's really like, what's going on. He throws a couple of knuckleheaded interceptions. So I think between him and George Holani, if those two are really back to like their freshman form, but also like obviously a bit better, I think they're going to be a pretty good team, but it really comes down to consistency there. Yeah. I think Hank Buckmeyer is like the biggest X factor for me. Um, yeah. Cause Holani, I feel like if Holani's healthy, he's just going to go with behind this offensive line. He's been itching to go. Um, I think Buckmeyer is a guy who is probably not going to put up like a crazy, you know, I wouldn't even say he's going to put up like Brett Rippin numbers. He's sure as hell not going to put up Kellen Moore numbers, but yeah. Um, I mean, last year, it looked solid on paper, 3,079 yards, 20 TDs, um, 63% completion. But like you said, there were some knuckleheaded moments um, where maybe he didn't turn the ball over, but he definitely put the ball in danger when he shouldn't have. Um, took a number of sacks that were probably unnecessary. Um, and the run game was was really pitiful last year. Um, yeah. And I think that was a big part of their downfall last year was just they couldn't run the ball. They were like, I think, just over three yards of carry last year. And so... If, if they can't get the run game going, it's got to be, you know, the Hank Bachmeyer season, the make it or break it season for him. And if, if he can't do that, I think they're cooked on offense. But the defense is, I think, where they're going to be super, super good. Because it seems like the last three, four years, they always return a bunch of experienced starters. And this year's not going to be any different. Um, yeah. And J.L. Skinner is, you know, has been the subject of one of our videos on our channel. Go check that out. Um had 92 tackles last year, three passes to fence. Um, I mean, that guy's a monster. For sure. Yeah, I think the thing with Bachmeyer, I know we've talked about him a bit, but he really he starts games well, I've noticed. Like when I watch Bolizzi State, he starts well. And then almost every time I watch them, he kind of deteriorates near the end. He doesn't really close out well. So I think that consistency, he's been around for a while. I think at this point, if he doesn't take that step, then it's not really there. I think they're probably not going to end up being a top tier team, but we'll have to see with that. And he's going to have some huge moments to like really show what he's about. We talked about what's on the schedule. He faces all the top teams in the conference. The non-conference is tough too. So, you know, if, if this is the year for Hank Bachmeyer to lead Boise state to, you know, 10 wins mountain West championship appearance, something like that. Um, You know, I think Phil Steele was saying they could be even a group of five near six bull bid kind of team. Um, I'm not ready to, to go there yet. I don't, I don't see it, yeah. but yeah, Bachmeyer is, is the guy that's got to lead them there. And I, I just don't think he's going to be that good, but I think he's going to be good enough to get them to a fairly solid bowl. I would say. Yeah. Um, 
And we've we've talked a bit about Air Force. I want to talk about them a little bit more. Um because I mean last year 10 and 3 went 6 and 2 in Mountain West play. Um they beat Louisville in the first responder bowl. That was a heck of a game by them. Um I mean you talk about consistency. This this coaching staff has been together for so long. Troy Calhoun at the helm is in his 16th year. And then the returners, they've got the ninth most returning offensive production in the country and the 15 they've got 15 total returning starters, which is their most in 8 years. Um, you know what the scheme is going to look like. We talked about Ezekiel Daniels, probably going to be a little bit of an or a different wrinkle in the offense than most um, service teams look like. And so I'm curious what your your feeling is with Air Force. Do you think that Air Force could be a team to win the Mountain West with, you know, the the service style triple option? Yeah, I mean, I'm not ready to take that step yet. I think they'll be really good. They were really good last year and I think they'll be even better this year. But at the same time, I still don't see them really – I think they'll be at best probably. I think their ceiling is the third best team in the Mountain West. I don't think they have the passing offense yet. And as much as I do love their running game, I don't think it's really going to be able to push the needle against some of these teams that are just scoring, scoring. Obviously, there's a couple of strong defenses in the Mountain West. I mean, I don't know. I think they'll definitely be able to take games, especially against like teams. I think Utah State and Colorado State versus Air Force, that defense versus offense matchup, I think that'll definitely be fun to see. And I think Air Force can definitely get get the best of those teams. But at the same time, I don't think they're really pushing Boise State or Fresno State yet. I think the defense is one of the better, probably three in the conference. Um, yeah. I know last year they only averaged – um, they gave up like 19 points a game. Boise State's was the only one above them in that category. Um, Air Force, they had the total top defense, 288 yards, second best passing defense, um, second best rushing defense. I mean, they were they were up there. They're returning a lot of their guys on defense as well. But it seems like no matter how good they are, they've had a couple 10-win seasons, 11-win seasons um, under Troy Calhoun but they haven't won the conference since 98. And that was back when they were in the whack. And then, so I feel like their window is kind of closing because this is such a veteran team and they have a really, I wouldn't say a really tough schedule, but there are times where I look at the schedule, like there could be a slip up here, like at Wyoming pretty early. I think that's a trap game. They do play at Utah state at UNLV back to back. Um, They do play at army too, which that's going to be a tough one. And at San Diego state to close, close the season. Um, so the <clears throat> schedule is, is brutal. Um, but I, I think this is going to be a, a veteran enough team. That's going to have the experience to, you know, to win close games and to beat really good teams and maybe even contend for a new year's six bowl. It depends on, you know, the Fresno States and the Cincinnati's, if you want to go outside the mountain West, the Houston's. So, um, you know, I, I feel like if they make it that far and they make it to 11 and one, um, I wouldn't be super surprised because we've talked about Zeke Daniels being a Keenan Reynolds, or I talked about um, Zeke Daniels being a Keenan Reynolds kind of guy that maybe shows up in New York, um, you know, as a, a sneaky Heisman finalist. Um, that's probably a little, a little bit too much, but I think the defense is, is yeah. so Malcolm good. Perry, Malcolm defense Perry, is, type of guy. Yeah, Malcolm Perry. There you go, another guy as well. Their front seven is going to be just. A, a really dominant again um i don't remember his first name but sanford was a guy that i think led their team in in tackles for loss and in sacks last year he comes back um you know they just they just get after it they're a ferocious defense um i think this is the year that air force could really probably win the, the mountain west i don't have them winning the mountain west but if this is the year to do it this it's this year yeah, for sure. Last year they did they held pretty much everyone aside from two teams under 20 points. I mean, that's pretty impressive. The two games they did surrender over 20 points, it was pretty bad. 40 point 40 points for Utah State and Nevada. So I mean, if they can really limit those like big high firing offenses like Utah State and Nevada, I think in conference they're gonna have a really good time. And then with the service games, obviously you kind of throw away all of like past resume with those. Those could go anyway, but I think they'll take at least one of two. Last year, they went one and one. Navy has been pretty pitiful the last few years. So we'll have to, we'll have to see what that. 
I want to say week two against Colorado. It's going to be ugly for, for Colorado. Yeah. I, had, I did the Pac-12 preview um, last week. Go check that out. Make sure to check out all of our Power 5 previews. Um, I said Colorado was going to go 0-12. Um, and Colorado going into Air Force, that's going to be super-duper ugly. I think that could be like a 5-6 score game, to be honest, because I just think Colorado is probably the yeah, worst Colorado. team in Power 5. Colorado sucks. I mean, I, I, obviously this isn't a Pac-12 thing, but like, I think Colorado wouldn't even they they wouldn't be a top tier team in this in the Mountain West. I think they'd be around the mid to bottom half. They're they're basically as good as a New Mexico would be in the Mountain West, in my opinion. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, speaking of the cream of the crop, you know, Utah State they won it last year, eleven games. Um, beat Oregon State in the Jimmy Kimmel Bowl. Um, and I think the one the way that they did it was so interesting because they had Logan Bonner who who just went off last year once he got the starting reins and they, they did it in close games as well. You know, there were four and oh in close games last year, but the defense is where I think that if they are going to fall, that's, that's going to be because of it. And last year, their defense wasn't necessarily special. Um, it was kind of like, you know, some of those, those high flying offenses in the pac 12 in years past where it's like, they're going to put up 500, 600 yards a game and they're just going to outscore everybody. And it doesn't really matter what the defense does. That was what Utah state did. And this year, I don't know if they're going to be that high flying (laughs) offense compared to what they were last year. Um, You know, they were second in total yards. They put up 33 points a game. I don't feel like they're going to get a lot better than that. Um, But I, I, I don't know. Logan Bonner to me is, one of the top two or three quarterbacks in the mountain West. It's just, what's going to, what is it going to look like around him? Um, Because there's not as much that gives me confidence to maybe win the conference as last year, but I think they've got the schedule to do it. That's why I have them, you know, finishing nine and three and and winning their division. Yeah. I think with Utah state, obviously you said it, defense isn't exactly there. And I, do, I love Logan Bonner, even going back to when he was with Arkansas State. He's been really productive. And he, down the stretch, I thought he was probably the best quarterback in the Mountain West last year. So I think between him and the running game, it's not – the running game's fine. Calvin Tyler put up some pretty good numbers last year. But it's not – it's obviously not in, like, the upper echelon of the Mountain West right now. So I think last year you can say, okay, the defense isn't there. Logan Bonner and Devin Tompkins are going to put up. 300 yards this game and we're probably going to put up 40 plus points when you take out Devin Tompkins who was amazing last year one of the best wide receivers in the country it's definitely going to be hard that receiving room there's some names there that could put up numbers but at the same time I think it really just someone's got to step up if they really want to cancel out that defense and if that happens yeah I think they'll be one of the top three teams in the division or in the conference I mean, Devin Tompkins had almost a thousand more yards than the next guy. Like, yeah. He almost doubled up the second place guy in receptions. Um, you know, Derek Wright comes back. I believe he had 11 touchdown catches last year. Um, you know, he's, he's a bigger target. Um, i trying to remember if Derek Wright is actually coming back. I feel like I remember seeing that he signed somewhere, but I, I can't recall. Um, but I mean, losing a guy that had almost a thousand more receiving yards is, is going to be tough. Cause now you have to guy, you have to get a guy that takes a monumental leap into that role. And nobody is probably going to jump from, you know, 700, 800 yards to 17, 1800 yards, you know, yeah. from one year to the next, most likely. Um, but having Logan Bonner as quarterback and, you know, with the veteran experience that he's had, like you said, at Arkansas state as well, um, going back to those days, I think that should give any wide receiver the confidence that they can step into those shoes. Um, and Calvin, Calvin Tyler is going to be a playmaker as well. But yeah. um, I think where he needs to step up as being a pass catcher, because I didn't like what I saw from from Calvin Tyler as a pass catcher. Now, of course, that's not a huge part of their offense, but given the lack of proven playmakers at receiver and tight end, I think that he's going to have to step up in that role. Yeah, just to go back, Derek Wright signed with the Panthers. So right. that receiving room is, yeah. So it's going to be their leading receiver is Brandon Bowling, 835 yards, 10 touchdowns last year, which is, I think he could be a solid like wide receiver one, but he's not like, he's not really putting up the numbers like Devin Tompkins. Derek Wright, he had similar numbers, but both of those guys, I think, are kind of similar. So 
I don't know. Having both of them would have been ideal, but yeah, someone will have to step up from that wide receiver room. Calvin Tyler definitely will see more targets and hopefully he can kind of produce off of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Utah state, I have them winning, um, you know, their division, the mountain division, but I'm not super sold on that. Like I think it's them or it's air force in my opinion, Boise state, maybe, you know, if a couple games go their way, but to me, it's, it's going to come down to that Utah state and air force game in like early October. Um, you know, I know it's like mid season, but, I mean, when you when you look back in late November, it could be like, hey, that was the game that decided it. Or Utah State at uh, Boise State in November, too. That could be one that we look back on as well. Um, but, like, some of the road games are super easy, in my opinion. Um, except for, I mean, the, the out-of-conference, they play at Alabama, at BYU. Yeah. They're going to, you know, they're going to slip up those games most likely. At BYU, maybe not, but they're not they're not winning. Yeah, no, I, think they'll give, I think they'll give BYU a good, a good run. And then at Colorado State, at Wyoming, at Hawaii, I don't feel like they could really slip up in any one of those games. Um, I mean, I'm pretty low on those three teams. The at Colorado State game would probably give me the most worry if I was Utah State. Um, and then at Boise State is going to be a big one. Home against San Jose State, that's a tough one as well. Yeah, um, I, I was going to I was gonna mention San Jose State. We can talk about them after, but Siobhan Cordero is a pretty underrated transfer. We can We can talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Because San Jose State, um, you know, offensively took a massive step down last year. Yeah, they they sucked last year offensively. Nick Starkle, I mean, he's always kind of been like a high end game manager, but like it really wasn't there last year. So I think Cordero, I really I liked him with Hawaii, especially those teams weren't particularly good, but he he really had some games where it was like, okay, this guy this guy's he's doing the most he can with this team. And I think he's really going to benefit from San Jose State having a better coached program as well as a defense to fall back on. Yeah, last year, I remember like early on in the season, I was looking to see that improvement because 2020, um, you know, he stepped into that starting role as well with Hawaii. And he showed flashes, but it was kind of like what we talked about with Hank Bachmeyer. Yeah. Like, okay, he's not there yet. He's still making some knuckleheaded plays. Last year, he threw a couple more interceptions, but... I think the ability to lead an offense was there a little bit more than it was in 2020. And then with San Jose state, I think that, like you said, better coaching. Absolutely. I agree with that. Um, I think it gives them the opportunity to develop and shine. Yeah, for sure. And then with Wyoming, that was one that we kind of differed on. I have them around the middle of the pack. You have them at the bottom. I thought Levi Williams transfer transferring might've been the most like head scratching move in all of college football. Like this offseason. Like he fit, he didn't, he wasn't particularly good as a passer last year. They won a lot of games. Well, they didn't win that many games, but the games they did win, he wasn't doing too much. But the bowl game, I mean, that bowl game was one of the most impressive performances of the year against Kent State. Four touchdowns rushing, one passing. I thought it was really like, okay, now this guy might be among the best quarterbacks in the Mountain West, which obviously not this year, but next year maybe. But I don't know. That's, it's an odd one. It puts Wyoming in a weird spot because I'm not sure what they're going to do at quarterback, but definitely if. Well, and then Sean, Sean Chambers was a guy that was starting the first half of the year, if I'm not mistaken, and he transferred to Montana State. And then Levi Williams, like you talked about, he had the, um, you know, the momentum at the end of the year, and then he transferred too. Um, so the, the quarterback situation, we thought it was going to be fixed because, you know, Chambers moved on. It's like, okay, it's Levi Williams times now. Um, you know, and then he leaves too. And then you lose Valade. It's like, what, what is this offense going to yeah. look like? And Isaiah Nayer transferred to Texas. Um, I mean, that offense, I think is probably going to be bottom two in the, in the mountain West, in my opinion. Um, I think the defense is going to be average, um, but against some of those teams, I, I just I don't see a way that they really pull off an upset against, you know, a Utah State or a Boise State or a Fresno State. Um, you know, they play at BYU, too. I just I think they have one of the harder schedules in the conference, given their situation. Yeah, I, I think they'll be a bit better. I don't think they're really going to be like pushing that many teams, but I think they'll probably come away with a couple of games that 
I think I think of the bottom, like bottom half of the Mountain West, I have them as one of the better teams. That's really where I stand. How about San Diego State? Because you know it's Brady Hope's yeah. third year back. Um, they went twelve and two last year. They broke a lot of college football fans' hearts by beating UTSA at the end of the year in the Frisco Bowl. Um, and but offensively, it's going to be a brand new team. Um, so the twelve the twelve wins looks almost unimaginable with you know the amount of um you know the loss of production that they had last year yeah they're a weird team because obviously they were very successful last year but at the same time it's it's hard to see them really like on paper being a top tier team in this conference i mean adding burmeister whatever we've mentioned him about like five times he's not really anything he's a he's a fine quarterback he's a game manager but i don't think it's really going to change much and then just looking across the roster, I think they'll be a good team, but I don't think they're really, like, amazing. They lost Daniel Bellinger, who I really liked at tight end. So that offense is definitely lacking compared to last year. And the defense, the defense is good, but it's just, I don't know. I see they're really, like, it's a really weird team to evaluate this year. When Cameron Thomas was... The, I believe the defensive player of the year in the conference. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, was he, had that, he had that award wrapped up pretty early. Um, yeah. And losing him is tough, but they still have seven returning starters back. Um, you know, they had one of the top two defenses in the league last season. So there's definitely reason to believe that their defense won't take a huge jump back. Um, but the offense is in the bottom 15 in the country and returning yards and offensive line starts. So, I mean, they're not going to put up points against, you know, an Air Force or a Boise State. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're not going to win a shootout. There's no way in hell San Diego State is ever going to win in a shootout. I mean, yeah. that's, that's not really saying anything crazy because that's, that's never been the team. Um, you know, that's not what they pride themselves on. But I mean, it feels like it's going to be hard to see them even amassing like 20 points a game this year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the defense, the secondary is pretty good. I mean, Patrick McMorris and Trenton Thompson, the solid safety duo. And I think they're definitely going to come away with a lot of turnovers. But that offense, I mean, I there's no way around it, really. I mean, there's not much to, like, come away with, like, shock. They lost Greg Bell, who was pretty productive as a running back. And so there's going to be a lot of new faces. And I don't know. I just – I think in this case – Maybe someone steps up. They're probably going to end up pretty mediocre offensively. How about your your Colorado State projection? Because last year three and nine, um, they haven't yeah. been to a bowl game in five years, and it seems like you've got them getting pretty close to getting back to that range again. Yeah, I think that a lot of that is just my confidence in both Clay Millen and Melquan Stovall to come with Jay Norvell and kind of put that together. I think they're might be I think obviously Hayner and Cropper is probably the best quarterback wide receiver duo but I think these guys with the chemistry they already have coming from Nevada could definitely make a run for their money as one of the top quarterback wide receiver duos and then Um, yeah I think Jay Jay Norvell I've always just been a big fan of offensively the defense is it's a couple years in the making and that's why I'm not ready to say okay Colorado State's going to be like this 9-1 team but I think they're definitely I think they're definitely in the conversation to win like seven to eight games and win a couple games that they're probably not predicted to. I watched a bit of Nevada's games last year, just because um, I have Liam to thank for that. Cause Liam talked about Nevada constantly yeah. last year. Um, and so I was intrigued about like why he was so interested in, in that team. And it felt like they should have been so much better with the talent they had. And that's why yeah. I, I, I'm not quick to jump on Colorado state. Cause I don't, I'm not very high on Jay Norvell as a head coach, especially jumping into a new situation with a lot of new talent. They've got the second fewest returning Letterman in the country. Yeah. Um, I know Letterman isn't, you know, that big of a, um, you know, probably a, a, a measure to, to use, but you know, there's just a lot of guys that are not there anymore. And I, I think that's important to, to note. And you've got a new head coach, new coaching staff, um, I don't feel like Jay Norvell is the guy that's going to lead Colorado state back to um, I shouldn't say back to, cause it's been a while, like I said, but um, I guess back to relevance at the very least. Yeah. Um, and so I, I'm not ready to say that they're going to be 
a very improved team right away. I have them improving from last year, but at the same time, you know, there's a range there where I could see them repeating the three and nine from last year. Um, but I don't see them being a bowl team this year. Um, I just, with this, their schedule and the situation, there's just a couple teams in the mountain West that just look brand new and Colorado state is one of those. And yeah. in most cases, brand new teams just get run over. Yeah, that's fair. I think I'm, I'm taking a bit of a gamble on Colorado state. I think they're going to be better than expected, but at the same time, I definitely see where the skepticism is Nevada last year definitely underperformed obviously Carson Strong wasn't really 100% healthy last year and that definitely hurts but yeah it was definitely hard to watch Nevada last year giving up 45 50 points and Carson Strong having to like kind of dig him out of that hole with Romeo Dubs and Laquan Silva yeah I mean just watching some of those games and like the coaching decisions I mean Steve Adazio was was known for some stupid coaching decisions yeah. last year um, and I felt like the trade off there with him versus Norvell was not as big as like, it was probably as little as could possibly be in college football. Um, you know, Mario Cristobal is another guy who's not known for being a great clock manager, yeah. but like, those are the three guys I think of are like, these guys are not very good when it comes to, you know, time management and handling timeouts and just, you know, they know what to do when, when the time is, you know, winding down, um, I don't know. I feel like Colorado State's going to be in purgatory for for quite a while. Um, and speaking of teams that have been in purgatory for what feels like forever is New Mexico. Um, they were also three and nine last year. Haven't been to a bowl game since 2016. Danny Gonzalez in his third year. Um, I mean, again, they lose a lot of guys, even though they didn't do much with those guys that they had anyway. Um, second fewest returning offensive line starts in the country. Um, they do a little bit have they do have some returning production on defense so that's where my confidence lies i think maybe they could be a four or five win team pull off some upsets but again i could see them just getting run over yeah new mexico i'm not particularly fond of i think they're going to be pretty bad next year maybe the, between them hawaii and unlv i think the other two teams are better than hawaii for sure but i think I think those are going to be the bottom three teams, and I think New Mexico falls in the middle. Right, because a couple of the games last year that New Mexico played, they were way more competitive than I would have thought they were because they only lost at UTEP by yeah. seven. Um, you know, they, they beat Wyoming on the road. Um, you know, Fresno State, they didn't necessarily – they didn't win by any means, but I feel like that game should have been much more of a blowout than it actually was. Um and then just at the end of the year, they completely were garbage. But I felt like yeah. at the beginning of the year, they were like, hey, this could be a competitive team this year. Um, and it just felt, I mean, the end of the year, they had Fresno State, Boise State on the road, and then home against Utah State. I mean, they just, they weren't going to put it together last year. But I think the schedule sets them up to maybe get off to a pretty good start. Um, you know, they play Maine at home. That should be a win. Home against Boise State in week two, I feel like it's a game that they could realistically win just because it's so early in the season. Um, home against UTEP is another one I'm really back and forth on. I think when I was going through this, I gave UTEP the win. At LSU, they're going to get smoked. Yeah. Um, I I yeah. think they'll start. I think they could realistically start the season two and one, two and two. But after that LSU yeah. game, I'm not – I see maybe the New Mexico State game they'll probably win. But after that, I don't – I don't know, man. I mean, some of those games I really don't think are going to be that close. Yeah, I, I think I had them starting two and two. I think maybe even three and two. I think I had them winning at UNLV. Um, it was one of the at UNLV or home against Wyoming. I think I had them winning one of those. And then yeah. they probably went like one and five, one and six the rest of the way. Um, because, I mean, you have back to back to back. You got Fresno State, Utah State, Air Force, San Diego State. That's in a four-week span, five-week span. Yeah, um, I mean, there's probably no team in in the Mountain West except for maybe a a Fresno State or a Boise State that's gonna you know go through that unscathed. And New Mexico State is not prepared to to go through that slate unscathed. Speaking of teams that are probably gonna get run over, most real you know realistically, I would say UNLV is a team that um, 
I'm really interested to see what kind of a leap they take because I am expecting some sort of an improvement. Um, even though they were two and ten last year, have a third year head coach. Um, again, they were a team that were that was competitive in some of those games last year. Um, you know, I like Marcus Arroyo as a coordinator, but not necessarily as a head coach so far. Um, Oregon fans don't like Marcus Arroyo as an offensive coordinator, but I think that there's a couple, again, this is a team that they could pull off some upsets with Cameron Friel. Um, I like some of the pieces they've got on offense. Charles Williams was their leading rusher all time, you know, single season rushing leader. He's gone. And so the rushing game is going to look way different, but UNLV is you. I mean, I feel like they could be a, a four or five win team this year. Yeah, UNLV, I mean, it's interesting. I think Cameron Frail definitely, he had his moments last year where he didn't look like completely as bad as the team around him did at times. They also added on Harrison Bailey, who I, I think he was a five-star coming out. I don't know if he'll start right away, but if he has to, I think he could definitely come in and shock some people and be pretty decent. And yeah, then, I'll, or yeah, right. you can go on. No, you can go. Um, yeah, Friel statistically does not look very strong, but I mean, I think most teams in the Mountain West were really experienced, so it was like they had to give the the award to somebody. Um, yeah, but I definitely think that the defense. It's like if you're a UNLV fan, I'm sure that, um, and I don't know why you are at this point, but like the defense has been just it's so in. It's been consistently so bad for so long. Um, they've not allowed fewer than 30 points a game since 2007, but they do return nine of 11 starters from last year. I don't know necessarily what's that, what that's worth for a team like UNLV in a conference like the mountain West. Um, maybe they could break that streak at the very least, but I don't think they're going to win against any of the, you know, the air forces and the Utah States. Um, but Harrison Bailey is an interesting point because, you know, committed to Tennessee early on five-star guy. He's probably the most talented quarterback UNLV's had in decades, um, unless I'm absolutely spacing Tate Martell? somebody. Tate Martell? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. No, I think we can safely say that uh, Tate Martell's UNLV career was uh, yeah. not all that it was cracked up to be. But, yeah, maybe Harrison Bailey steps in and um, UNLV makes some noise. I don't know. Yeah. But I think another thing free. with them, with UNLV just looking – their only good defensive player last year, Jacoby Whitman, left. He went to Michigan State. So, really, what was already a terrible defense just lost their leader in, t- in tackles and sacks. Like, it's pretty brutal. Yeah, they're probably going to get run over. But at the same time, I feel like they're one of those teams that's, that you could see them storming the field in Vegas against, yeah. you know. No, I do think they're going to put teams. up a couple upsets. Charles Williams at running back is pretty – pretty slept on i don't think he's i don't think he's amazing but i do he put up numbers last year with the team that obviously can throw much and i do think he'll do the same this year so he actually did graduate unfortunately oh did he okay yeah Yeah. i was wondering about that yeah Yeah. i didn't i don't know he was a super senior rushing yeah their rushing stats last year is literally him 1300 yards everyone else was Nothing really. Doug Brumfield, their backup quarterback, was their second leader in rusher. Yeah. So he's, I mean, Brookfield's probably going to be like a, a third string quarterback if I had to guess. Um, I don't even think he came back either. I think Brumfield is graduated. Yeah. I wasn't sure about that. We were talking about the, um, how they just kind of gave the freshman award to Cameron Friel. It would have went to Brumfield if it didn't go to Friel. So it's kind of like whoever UNLV's quarterback was. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Brentfield was was a sophomore last year. Um, yeah. Or he's a oh, sophomore was he? this year. Oh, yeah, sophomore yeah, this year. A... COVID yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah. Brentfield is a guy who is super athletic. I mean, 6'5". I saw some flashes of him at the beginning of last year. I was like, okay, maybe this guy is something. Um, but again, it's like you and over, you have to take what you can get. Um, you know, any any little bit of talent, you're like, oh, we've got something here. Um, and Harrison yeah. Bailey is a super talented kid. And um, if I had to put money on it, I would say he's probably going to win the starting job. Yeah. I think he'll definitely see the field next year. Even if they do give the edge to Cameron Friel for being there. 
a longer time. I believe the last team that we've got to talk about is Nevada. Um, yeah. Because Nevada, like we talked about, underachieved. Carson Strong was injured. Defense was god-awful. Rushing offense was god-awful. They bring in a defensive-minded coach this year. And I, I don't think the defense is going to be that much better because um, they return the least returning tackle production, least returning big play defensive production. Like their defense is completely brand new. Um, their entire team really is is brand new. So, I mean, going six and seven last year. Um, I'm sorry, eight and five last year. I'm looking at a completely different team. Yeah. Um, Nevada had the third least returning tackle production and third least returning big play defense production. I was talking about Hawaii. They're like the same team pretty much big at this difference. point. So, uh, kind yeah, of. who can blame me? Yeah, Nevada was eight and five last year, got absolutely smoked in the quick lane bowl. Obviously, they were missing some of their bigger pieces at the end of last year. But, yeah. um, I have no confidence in Nevada to do much of anything this year. Um, yeah. I have them at three and nine. I think that's being generous. Yeah, they had so many games last year where it was just like they were they were competitive in pretty much every game that like they either won or they were really competitive aside from the Kansas State game, which was out of conference. But like the Air Force and San Diego State games back to back and then the Fresno State game were all winnable, but like they didn't really give any they really had to bring anything other than Carson Strong and Romeo Dubs. But all three all three of those games were their best three performances, but the rest of the team wasn't really doing much. Fresno State game was super winnable because I actually was doing the yeah. uh, um, the conference or not the conference the the weekly um, preview show the week before that game and I predicted that Fresno State was going to win on a late touchdown and a two point conversion and they did exactly that um, and I mean that that de- that defense actually kind of showed up throughout that game they gave up thirty four points which for Mountain West standards that's not bad if you if you lose. Um, but, I mean, the offense, Carson Strong at 476 yards that game, Romeo Dubs at 200, and they just, yeah. you know, couldn't score when it really mattered. And, um, you know, if they couldn't do that last year, they're sure as hell not going to do that this year. Yeah, I I actually didn't know Shane Ellingworth transferred there. I, he was a pretty highly talented group to Oklahoma State a while ago. I'd assume he's going to start over Nate Cox because Nate Cox wasn't very good, but. I think they could definitely have a serviceable offense, but it's really everything else that's the issue with Nevada year in and year out. I do believe Nate Cox got into some trouble in the offseason. If I do, yeah. I do. Yeah, I think he had a DUI. Um, yeah, he got into some trouble against Western Michigan on the field, too. So I'm just... <laughs> that's true. Everybody was like, oh my God, look, it's, you know, it's the 6'7 quarterback, 6'9 quarterback, yeah, I, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, I saw him and then I actually watched the game and I'm like, oh, okay. And he's also like, a super well, senior. So there's not really much incentive of starting him. Yeah, I mean, you know, Toa Tawa is the only guy that's going to be worth yeah. watching. Um, defensively, they're going to be just lost, I think. Um, and that's tough because Ken Wilson coached some really solid guys at Oregon. And I think eventually he's going to be a good defensive-minded head coach. But from a program that was like at the very bottom of the country um, in defensive production last year, um you know, I, I don't think you can go from bottom to top that quickly. It's going to take probably a good amount of time. One of my favorite parts of these conference previews is the hot takes. We've kind of made our case for a couple of them already, but it's time to make our statement. Um, we've only got a couple minutes left, so let's run through them pretty quickly. And I'm going to go ahead with my very first one because I teased it a little bit at the beginning, but I'm going to go ahead and make the statement. I think the Jake Heiner, 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 Jake Hayner is going to be a Heisman finalist. Say that three times fast. And I think Fresno State goes unbeaten in the Mountain West. I think, you know, Jalen Cropper is one of the best receivers in the conference, if not the best returning one in the conference, given some of the guys that left this offseason, graduated, went to the NFL. Um, Jake Hayner just has every tool in the shed to be a dynamic college football quarterback and maybe even even better NFL quarterback. Um, My second one is I think UNLV is going to be the better team in Nevada. I think they're going to be better than the Wolfpack. Um, When you look on paper, I don't think that's saying anything too crazy, but UNLV is not going to be very good. Um, Nevada is going to be 
not good at all either, as we just got them talking about. But I think UNLV is going to pull off a couple upsets. And then I think my hottest take is that San Jose State is going to finish with the top defense in the Mountain West, but I have them going six and six. I think they're going to get, um, you know, their offense is probably not going to win them their games. I think it's going to be because of their defense. Um, and that schedule is going to be tough, but I think their defense is going to hold strong um, and they're going to be competitive in like all of those games because of that. Yeah, I, I agree with you on most of those, especially the San Jose State one. I think they're going to have one of the top defenses, maybe in the country. I'm a little higher on them in terms of wins. But overall, yeah, I, I agree with those. I think in terms of my hot takes, I think first, Melquan Stovall, I think, is in for a huge season with Colorado State. He's coming with Jay Norvell, coming with Clay Mellon. I think he could be top two, maybe top three in the in the conference in terms of receiving yards. He looked really good in their spring game as well. So, yeah, I could totally see that happening. Um, I talked about him earlier. I also think in that same top three, top four conversation, I think Stephen Cobbs taking over Khalil Shakir is going to be is going to be awesome. I think he could be one of the best receivers in the conference as well. Maybe the best. I think that's still Jalen Cropper, but see with that. And then in terms of teams, I thought. We kind of differed a bit, but I suppose we've talked about Colorado State a lot. But I think, yeah, Fresno State, between both of us, I think we're both, we both think that's going to be a really good team. I think they'll win the Mountain West. So I don't know if that's a hot take or not, but I think they'll win the Mountain West and they'll make some noise in their competition. Yeah, yeah my hot take, I think they'll make some noise against USC. Yeah, I don't think they'll the win the game, but I think they'll make some noise. Yeah, I would love to see Fresno State walk in there yeah. and, and just shut all the USC noise up and yeah. win that game. Um, I don't think it's going to happen, but I, I think it's going to be a really fun game. Um, but yeah, I agree with that last part. I've got Fresno State going unbeaten throughout Mountain West play. I've got them beating Utah State in the championship game. Um, and I think they're going to be the the New Year's Six team uh, in the group of five. Um, that's, that's probably the part of the, uh, the mountain West conference that, um, you know, hot takes that I probably didn't mention. Um, the American conference with Cincinnati and Houston, I think those are probably their biggest two competitors. Cincinnati. I'm not sold on getting back there. Um, I think Houston is probably the biggest one. So if anybody's going to top Fresno state and, and the group of five near six bowl bid, I think it's going to be Houston, but I'm all in on Fresno state this year as I was last year, but uh, I'm I'm ready to uh to be right a little bit more than I was last year on on my Fresno State Bulldogs. Yeah. Right on. Well, Karan, it's been a lot of fun. The Mountain West is uh, one of my favorite conferences to talk about. It's one of my favorites to watch. Obviously, being from the West Coast, as you are as well, um, there's going to be a lot of new teams, and you know, it's going to be a lot of new guys that are just going to break through. Um, and some veteran teams too. You got Air Force, Boise State, you know, Utah State. These teams are going to be fun to watch. So don't just watch the Power Five. Make sure to watch the group of five teams as well because it's just as fun, if not more fun. In my opinion, I think it's more fun. But thank yeah. you everybody so much for tuning in. Make sure to check out all of our Power Five previews that were up last week. We've got a bunch of group of five ones for you this week as well. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Portal. CFB, make sure to follow us on Instagram as well, TikTok, check out our articles on our website. We've got so much content coming out. Like we said, we're only in the last six, five weeks or so left until college football. So hang tight, everybody. College football is coming soon. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one.